Hi, I'm Ted Rappaport. I'm a professor at New York University, and I'm the founding director of NYU Wireless, a multidisciplinary research center at NYU. Favorite ice cream, fresh strawberry, all natural ingredients, and um, fresh vanilla ice cream with some uh, chocolate, chocolate chips. Uh, well, uh, I did learn that I was uh, elected to the National Academy of Engineering, which was really a remarkable and very humbling um, accomplishment. You know, when I was a young professor, I remember wondering if, if that could even happen. It's gigahertz, like Doc Brown, like Walter Weeks. He was my antenna professor for grad school at Purdue. Walter Weeks always called it gigahertz. And I asked him, he said, it's gigahertz. We National Bureau of Standards says it's gigahertz. And sure enough, it is gigahertz. Of course, if you call it gigahertz, you're not going to get any deduction in points. Oh, that's fascinating. In 1985, the FCC opened up the ISM bands, 900, 2.4, uh, 5.2 or 5.8 gigahertz. And I wrote a paper about that for the ham radio community. And in 1987, I conducted the world's first measurements inside factory buildings at a frequency much higher than anyone was thinking about at the time. I was at 1.3 gigahertz. I, but I built basically a channel sounder. My first channel sounder went around to these factories in 87. And 1987 is the first year that a group of engineers left IEEE 802.4, a wired ethernet and started the wireless ethernet or wireless token bus uh, study group, IEEE 802.4L, and they heard about my PhD at Purdue, invited me to one of the first, uh, first couple of IEEE 802.4L meetings, which were the beginning of 802.11 in 87, 88, used my measurements. I told them what, what I saw in the factories. They used that, and then NCR hired me as a consultant before they ever introduced the first Waveland product. So I kind of had a back, you know, behind the uh, scenes involvement with the very founders of Wi-Fi and they used my PhD thesis and then our group at Virginia Tech to build the knowledge for that in early industry. I think I was the first person in the world outside of Qualcomm to analyze the CDMA capacity. And I knew it was going to be seven to 14 times anything that existed. Uh, it was a fascinating story. I was hired as a consultant to Motorola the day Andy Viterbi and Erwin Jacobs disclosed the idea back in 1988. So I was very fortunate in my career to see very early to know uh, the things that most of the world took many, many years to know or understand. And I guess that's why I've never been afraid of, you know, when there's something foundational technically, I have confidence that eventually the world will catch on, just like millimeter wave. Eventually the world will catch on. Mid to late 90s, I saw millimeter wave would work for mobile. And at UT Austin, I proved it on the campus of UT. Uh, and then when I came to New York in 2012, a group of undergraduates and a great postdoc from uh, uh, UT Austin, we made measurements around the city and proved that you could get 100 meter range on very low power. And the world came, saw, copied our system, verified it around the world, now you have 5G. In your cell phone, spectroscopy, see in the dark camera, night goggles, see behind walls, check for allergens in your food, determine if there's smoke in the air, or toxic uh, water nearby or bad vapors. In the network side, super fast data rate, wireless cognition, human level speeds, guardian angels that work in the crowd. Our com my computer will meet with your computer to figure out our meeting, do our banking. Wireless cognition, these huge data rates are gonna provide massive capabilities. Of course, all the other stuff, virtual, uh, augmented reality, uh, smell-o-vision. Wireless is, is really entering its renaissance. It's going to pervade our life the way pens and paper pervade it today. I mean, wireless will be in the fabric of everything, literally in the fabric. Our clothes will eventually have wireless with the Internet of Things decades to come. I mean, wireless, it, we're going to have power transfer. We're going to have information. We're going to track goods. I mean, you already see it. Wireless is starting to even replace memory. So instead of having hard drives, we'll have wireless in the cloud, wireless connectivity. You won't even have memory the way we think of, of memory. And, and ultimately, I think we'll be controlling rob, robots um, and operating at data rates close to, to the human brain in 15, 20 years. 
So wireless cognition and having robots be surrogates, either electronic robots or actual mechanical robots uh, doing our bidding uh, will become commonplace in 20, 25 years. It's a great field. Um, I, I just don't see anything stopping it. It's riding the wave of Moore's Law. Moore's Law for computers is now coming to bandwidth and speeds in the wireless world. It's just kind of followed a 10 to 20 years uh, behind. 